Good day, everybody. Rob here at WesternPacificWeather.com. It is currently the 30th of January, 2011, and this update is mainly going to be about this tropical cyclone out here, tropical cyclone Yasi, just north-northeast, about 300 nautical miles of Port Vila. Uh, they really don't need any more precipitation there. They've been kind of getting uh, pounded by uh, numerous cyclones the last month. Also, uh, just out to the west here, I do want to know on uh, tropical cyclone Anthony, really the remnants of what was a much stronger cyclone, uh, making landfall here on Queensland. Radar are out of there showing some heavy precipitation in that region. They really don't need any more rainfall, but this event should uh, only last about 12 hours. But the big topic is really this one out here, uh, several thousand miles across, one of the uh, bigger storms of this season in terms of overall size. And we're actually looking at this developing even more here. Uh, oh, the other thing I want to know is that if you are here uh, about any of the uh, colder weather up in the northern hemisphere, I am going to have another update here in just a few. Uh, actually, snowing throughout much of Japan today out into uh, Tokyo and uh, north, seeing a lot of snow, even as far south as the Nagasaki, so going to have another update on that, but uh, zooming in on this tropical cyclone, though, it is currently moving to the southwest. Uh, current max winds are about 45, gusting up to 55 knots, uh, that's basically 45 sustained with those gusts higher, but uh, as you can see in these frames here, it is intensifying very significantly and very rapidly here, um, looking at actually about a 25 knot increase over the next several days to a max possibly around 110 to 120 knots which could put it in the equivalent of the category 2 even a category 3 uh, hurricane back in the uh, he's on the um, western hemisphere so uh, pretty very significant storm out of this Australia usually does not get these super cyclones uh, moving towards uh, the coast here but really looking like it, this is going to be a possibility in the long run here actually looking at JTWC's warnings here do note that this is warning number one from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center on this system, so it has a m lot of time for some change. You do have the cone of air here, but that could swing either way. But right now, though, they are following Tropical Cyclone Anthony out here towards Queensland. There's got the monsoonal trough throughout this region and a high-pressure area to the south. We'll show that on the streamline analysis here in a second. But with that following that cyclone, uh, Tropical Cyclone Anthony here, looking at landfall just south of Cairns possibly, but anywhere along the Queensland coast here is very possible even as far south of Brisbane I really want to take this out of uh, out of uh, your uh, view here at this time but right here though we are looking at a max at about 0 3 or excuse me the third in the morning uh, JTVWC is showing a max about 110 gusting up to 135 knots so very strong system uh, looking at the model consensus here kind of uh, showing what JTWC is seeing here it's a combination of uh, several models here and showing it just moving north of uh, the uh, New Caledonia out in here and then eventually moving its way out towards the uh, west on the third making landfall so this is basically the consensus an ensemble of all the models here also noting it's running over all these high sea surface temperatures basically about 28 degrees and above here uh, even showing above uh, 30 out here uh, farther off to the north in the equator right here so very uh, very uh, high sea surface temperatures low vertical wind shear tons of exhaust aloft and a very wide base to uh, absorb all that moisture out giving it that much more potential for development now here showing the European model, uh, I like to use this occasionally because it does have to pretty much get a loop out of here, but if you look out here just north of Port Vila, you do see the development out of the system and it ends up moving across the Coral Sea and making landfall here along Queensland coast, but uh, the reason why I really like this right now is because you see the immense sensitivity and the overall size of this storm as it starts to make landfall. So uh, that's one thing I do want to note, the winds out of this system is going to be one factor, but the amount of precipitation and the overall band uh, from end to end of this system is going to be very broad even if just looking at the satellite picture right now you can see it's several thousand miles across and that could increase the likelihood of flooding, especially in some of the watersheds like Rockhampton, all the water coming downstream, eventually making it there. If you have it over such a broad area, that flooding is even going to be uh, worsened in such regions as that. So here looking at the streamline analysis, you can see this overall background flow going around an area of high pressure to the south here, uh, that monsoonal trough moving off towards the west here. If you just follow these arrows, really just taking the system out in this way. And if we scroll down here, actually uh, kind of flicking through this really fast here, uh, you can see out until Monday you still have that circulation around the high pressure down here that uh, that 
counterclockwise circulation around this high pressure and basically the uh, overall background flow moving out towards Queensland here and that's really where that model consensus is pointing at and why they have this system moving out towards the uh, the west here. And last showing you this enhanced IR imagery here with these very high cloud tops but I one thing I do want to show in this is the last several frames you do see that overall circulation really starting to form especially the outflow along the southern periphery here really forms up in the last several frames here and you start to see a very weak eye actually forming in the center of this so that's really showing the uh, rapid intensification out of this system and here just moving off towards the uh, the west and eventually out towards the uh, west southwest so uh, that's all I got for today everybody if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, as usual, you can email me here at westernpacificweather.com, post in any of the comment boxes on the YouTube channel or at the uh, website. And also, uh, if you um, want to uh, talk a little more about the system, I'm also posting this at storm2k.org, a very good thread and a lot of scientific analysis on uh, this tropical cyclone there as well. And also, I'm going to be posting some videos from Solar Watcher, I believe that's the name of his YouTube channel, at westernpacificweather.com. He has some very good analysis on these storms as well. So trying to kind of a team up effort on this one. It uh, looks actually it's going to be a very strong in the long run here. So I will have another update uh, by tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon on this system as we continue to watch it develop. So everybody stay safe out there. Uh, please uh, continue to watch the Bureau of Meteorology if they put any warnings out here on the uh, Queensland coast. And even out in New Caledonia, you have to continue to watch this system as well. So uh, have a great day and bye.